this piece is called Yellow Ride. To the yellow car right here. And I'm not really a car person, so I keep forgetting the make of that car. I know Eugene knows it. Can you tell everybody what it is? Buick Skylark. Okay. What is it? Buick Skylark. Louder. Buick Skylark. Okay. Now, the Bowery in Coney Island, um, <clears throat> at the time that we were around doing revitalization, was bleak and empty. There were food stands, but there was always a car parked there, you know? And this car was there half the time. Uh, I, I just wanted to do, do a portrait of it. And at the same time, again, I was experimenting with breaking up the surface because of the dire situation that the area was in at the time. Um, it's very, very illustrative. There's a lot of um, detail in it. And also, I added some graphite and some paint, which makes it, as I said, more illustrative. The shadows, if you look closely, become objects in themselves. <coughs> And when you turn the corner, there's a shuttered down uh, gate with some graffiti on it. Now, is that on board or is that on paper? It's foam core on board, and it's all colored paper, paint, and graphite. So, Philomena, you're talking about the revitalization. So, was this a certain time period that yes, it was a project undertaken? Uh, during particular years or? When we were down there in the 80s, the artists, it was the very, very beginning of even the thought of revitalization. Everyone. Had it been shuttered people, prior to that or had it always been shuttered down, but still people had holding on. Okay. And um, we were around doing murals. We renovated a dark ride. Lots of, I uh, did a newsletter about what was happening in Coney Island. We couldn't understand why everyone in New York turned from it didn't support it anymore, and what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, in time, I think that we did a really, really important feat, because we ignited the fire for more artists, developers, and just regular people who knew it from the past or never met it before came back. Hmm. And we called ourselves the Coney Island Hysterical Society. <laughs> <laughs> we were hysterical and historical. Mm -hmm. and, uh, actually, me and my partner who formed the organization, we're trying to put a book together or a catalog right now of all the projects that we've done and what it was like there, et cetera. Hmm. So, even well, though... When did they start the Mermaid Parade? Because that was a the big deal. The Mermaid Parade's been going on for like... 38 years or so, uh -huh. when Dick Ziggin, the um, founder of his group, was around, we developed historical society and he developed the Mermaid Parade and Coney Island, USA, and he stayed there. He actually has a building. And um, probably, I would say, by 1990, we dispersed. I went back to my own studio. What was early in 1988? Uh, we had a child, Gene and I, and, you know, just my focus has changed. But I kept doing the work. This piece is like, say, from 2007, because I, I held on to the photos and the memory and the sketches. So I might do a piece on Coney Island that, you know, the image existed a long time ago, but it's still fresh because it's, it's more alive on the inside mm -hmm. <laughs> than on the outside. I'm interested. In the shift in perspective um, from the view of the Skylark here mm -hmm. and then above it, you know, looking up at the building and mm -hmm. the fire escape or, you know, whatever. And I'm just interested to hear more about your thoughts. Well, I kind of did the piece at the bottom half and then I just felt like tripping out, you know, on the top. Um, <laughs> I kind of am making it more abstract and more, um, yeah, yeah, more about emotion than illustrated. So there's a stark contrast. Thank yeah. you for very good question for bringing that up. 
and the tough and violent. I was just going to say I like that. I yeah. like the, the way it's juxtaposed. Like it, yeah. Yeah. I do too, yeah. And it's also kind of like, yeah, it, it's hilarious, you know? Mm -hmm. It's part of the nature of the place. Yes? Oh, I think you're right. I just mentioned that you know Coney Island is a, is a neighborhood. It's a residence as well. Everybody just thinks it's an amusement park. But to get to Coney Island, you're going to tenement houses. Mm -hmm. The trains are passing right by the windows. It's all part of the element there, and uh, it just it was intriguing. She was intrigued in that. I remember her talking about that, wanting to add that in as well. So is Coney Island uh, is that the regional the place actually too, or just the amusement park? It's a, it's a neighborhood. It is it's a neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, it's a real neighborhood. Stop on the train. It's the neighborhood part and, and the neighborhood. Okay. The rides kind of spread up on the sidewalk. Huh. If you could imagine rides shoehorned into different shaped buildings, hmm. you know, very unique. But it wasn't always like that. It's gone through, you know, many lifetimes. And at the turn of the century, it was the most fabulous park, you know, in the world. With Steeplechase Park and Luna Park. And when I was a kid going there, really it was like full and swarming and lots going on. But it was probably already starting its decline. Who was aware of that? You know, not me. Yeah. So when did the decline start? Say that again? When did the decline start? Oh, well, the real obvious decline, mm -hmm. I would say, in the after Steeple Trace Park closed down in 1964, that was on one of the major beautiful pavilions that had an indoor and outdoor park within the realm of Coney Island. Mm -hmm. And when that closed down, um, right Diane, you know that too, oh, yeah. she's another Coney Island believer, um, it started, yeah, it started.